Hey, good evening, everybody. Hey, Doug, how are you? I love your little bear. That's cute. And uh, um, what was it? Uh, Sam, you, 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 you say he's got to have a bull to match. Well, I think he needs some inspiration, and I'm not sure the inspiration is there yet to carve a bull. <laughs> not 100% sure. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Need a little inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Larry, how are you? Hi. Glad you're doing okay. All righty, let's see. It's just now time. Well, let's wait a minute. We'll just kind of, kind of chat here. So, um, nice, nice picture there, Doug. I like that. That 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 looks pretty cool. For anyone that just logged in, just scroll up a little bit, and you'll see one of Doug's carvings there. Um, that that is that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, Sam, you're asking, uh, are you seeing follow-through connecting to screen of Rick? Screen number one? Wait a minute here. Sam, are you um, are you able to see the chart? Okay, cool. All right. Everybody can see a chart right now. You should see the spy. Might be moving right now. All right, great, great, great. Hey, if 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 it turns out you lose the um, screen, uh, which you know I could lose internet, in which case I will uh, give Ed a text and Ed will let you know, hey, Rick's lost internet. Uh, but if you lose the screen or something, at the very top you'll see two arrows, uh, kind of like a clock chasing each other. Uh, just reload, and that may be the only problem. Okay. Let's see, so Rob's having trouble. Uh, Sam, I don't know. I had to reload to get the screen. Dan, it works now. Thank you. Thank you. I guess it doesn't do me any good to let Val know to reload, right? <laughs> let me write. <laughs> reload Val. I, I, maybe he knows what that means. Oh. All right, so we've got about two minutes after, so let's, let's uh, kind of get going here. Um, one of, here, let's, I'm going to do a little house cleaning first, uh, a little bit of house cleaning. Uh, this one is for members. Uh, this here is for members here. But if you, uh, members of, of Hit Run Candlesticks, if you, and you can do the same thing with right way options and there'll be a similar, similar page. Um, anyway, um, so members, this is where you log in. Uh, if you come down here and it might, I'm sorry, mine loads slow because I've got a lot loading in when I do this. Uh, cl just click right in here. Um, I started off this morning uh, talking about this week, the volatility this week uh, could be insane. Could could be really insane. Uh, now this is what this is is really onboarding for new members. But if you don't know it's here, it's worth looking at. But just click on this arrow. And scroll through, and there's some helpful information here, times and whatnot, um, things like that. Which that what, what I want to get to, you, you'll see here in a second. Um, I want to get to. Uh, we'll come back to this page here. Uh, well, actually, we'll yeah, we'll come back here. Different. Um, there we go. Here's the page I want to get to, and. Um, if, if you take a look at this, which I'm not one for following it, but, you know, I, I don't pay attention. In fact, I've got to ask everybody in the room usually, you know, what what happened, you know, because I don't, like I say, I don't follow it. But if with this morning, if, you know, well, I think yesterday I took a look at this just to see what kind of um, uh, reports were coming out. And there's a ton of reports follow the green and red dots here uh, tomorrow uh, PMI number then the ISN number construction spending jolts number uh, Thursday look at all those and and Friday th th this is a crazy a crazy crazy week here uh, of how many reports are out um, so I started this morning off in the trading room talking about this and 
Um, it, it, this is it's one of those things where you 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 have to know if you're it, you know if you're in the in the if you're trading in your lane. It's like it's like buying a boat. You know, I could probably go out and afford a rowboat, maybe a canoe, two paddles, some life vest. Jamie, Sam, or Graham there could probably go out and buy a yacht. So stay in your lane. You know, do what you can afford, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm not sure this is the best week to be out there uh, trying to prove a point to yourself or somebody else. This just might not be the best week. So uh, I want to point out. So a little house cleaning there for members. Make sure you can you can check in on that. Um, let me go back here, see if it'll let me. Here you go. Uh, now, th this is for... Um, for anyone that's that not a member or we interested in a trial, uh, there's Hit Run Candlesticks 30-day trial. Here's a Right Way Options 30-day trial. You can do them both at one time here. And I, I, I really don't know how many people go to read the blogs, uh, blogs, plural, Hit Run Candlesticks and there's a Right Way Option. They're completely separate. They're not related. And uh, well, they're not related in the sense it's not the same person writing them. Um, Doug writes it for right way option. Ed Carter writes it for hit run candlestick. So there's there's completely different views, different information. It's worth it to go check it out. Um, you know, midday. Uh, it's all it's all they're both updated and posted pre market or pre yeah pre market before the market opens. You know, sometime during the day or that evening, just go take a read of those. Uh, they're impressive. They they really really are impressive. Um, uh, another one for members, and this includes trial members, and this is for right way options or hit run candlesticks. If you are not getting alerts and you want alerts on your smartphone, um then we can't do anything about this right now tonight but when you're when you're logged into whichever trading room you want to be in and it can be both um, make sure you bring it to our attention and we can help you uh, set up the app so you can get logged in here okay uh, another little piece of information this is the last little bit of house cleaning uh, if you're not doing anything tomorrow uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern uh, Ed with Live Trading Alerts will be conducting a webinar um, tomorrow. <laughs> you know, it's killing me, Ed, that I can't talk about some things. You realize that, don't you? <laughs> anyway, there's some cool stuff coming down the road. That's all I'm going to tell you. And I don't think Ed's going to talk about it tomorrow, and Ed's probably going to shoot me, boot me out of here for even saying this, but I can't stand it. So just let's just keep our eyes open, our ears open. And one of these days, uh, yeah, confidential stuff. Well, that'll teach Ed to tell me something confidential. <laughs> so anyway, if you're not doing anything, 2 p.m. tomorrow, check it out. Uh, live trading alerts. Okay. Everyone, thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. Let's get started here. So, so, let's get started. What are we going to do, huh? Um... Um, Doug posted that picture up there with a little bear hidden away, and somebody said that he should he should um, carve a a bull. And then I made a comment. Well, I think Doug needs a little inspiration uh, to, to 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 carve a bull. And I'm not sure the market is actually giving him inspiration right now. Um, it's certainly not giving me inspiration uh, to be a bull. While, but we are in a relief rally. That we are. So uh, short-term bull, okay, yeah. Um, the higher we go, the more uh, cautious I would be. Uh, I Absolutely. There's, there's two important areas that I think, um, just if we just think of just two round numbers, uh, one of them is going to be the 50-period moving average. And the other one is going to be the 200 period moving average. Now, in, in the most simplistic way, that's what we need to chew through to say that 
the bulls are back in town. And if that happens, then I will, I will say, okay, bulls are back in town uh, until they're not. <clears throat> and right now, I don't think they are back in town. I do think we have a little relief rally going on. And those that want to take advantage of it, take advantage of it. I certainly am. Um, but like I said, uh, as we move up, I would be a little bit cautious uh, the higher we get. With that said, um, I don't think we should necessarily predict what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. I do think we should follow the chart. So my plan is simply to, oh, let me change my tools here real quick. Oh, uh, there we go. My plan is to simply follow the chart. And if this is what the chart wants to do, I will follow it all the way up until, and I'm not saying this is going to happen here, but until I see a selling candle or until we don't even have to see a selling candle. We can just sort of trickle down. And if, if, if we were to, uh, I'm just going to draw a trend line here. If we were just to break down through that trend line, that would be one of those signals right here. So let's follow price. Let's follow price. Let's follow the trend that's given to us. And right now, you can see that the trendicator is green. You can see that the three EMA, that's the yellow line, is above the T line. And the T line is trying to work itself over uh, the, that red green dot, which we call the trendicator, which is nothing more than the 17 exponential moving average. You could use whatever moving average you want, whatever, you know, floats your boat. Uh, the 17 EMA floats my boat. Uh, so that's what I tend to use there. And we're doing a great job. So I'm going to stay with that until that's not there. Okay, with that said, let's look at a few more things, I guess. Uh, we do have a bullish W pattern setting up. Now I know I may be, try I may be painting a bullish uh, picture here, but I am not a big time bull, okay? I'm a relief rally bull, and that's that's a little bit different. Um, and just because we have a bullish W pattern doesn't mean that a jubilation, you know, we're going to go higher. It's not what that means. Thanks, Ed. It's not what that means. It means we have a bullish W pattern, and it simply means that over oh, about that 407, 408 number there, um, above that, the bulls have the ball. Uh, if 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 tomorrow we get down here, then the bulls no longer have the ball. Uh, the, the bears will have the ball. So um, let's let's stay on our toes. Very important right here. Okay. Um, let's see. If, if if you can't see the screen, uh, click hit F5, or at the top right you'll see two arrows chasing each other. Uh, click on that. Of course, yeah, I'm going to, all right, so let's go back to town here. Let's go back to town here. Uh, so overall, I painted kind of a little bullish relief rally picture here. Uh, now let's, let's, let's paint some bad picture here. Uh, I'm not a, a Elliott wave trader. I'm not. You know, I don't, I don't get into the well, Elliott Wave. I'm, I just don't, okay? We'll just leave it like that. But I kind of understand it. I mean, I've, you know, 30-some years here of trading. I I kind of understand it. it. kind of makes sense to me. I know a little bit about it. But if we take a look at this here, that's what I see going on. And... We've got this wave one down, wave two up, wave three down. So is this wave four coming up? We'll see. And um, that means wave five might be coming. Now, in, in the whole world of, uh, let me grab a tool here real quick. There we go. We'll do that one. In the whole world of, of this type of move here, and this is true in an uptrend, um, wave wave three and five are the money waves. Wave one is 
it, it can be the money wave, but it's usually the first wave that catches a lot of people off guard. Now they're ready for the second wave, and many times people get in a bear market, people get suckered in to this wave when really what they should be waiting for is the clue here because this is a money wave. That's your money wave right there. That's where you make the most of your money. That's the most of your money right here. Uh, then there's wave four right here, which is like wave two. It's, it's just a relief rally. Then you have wave five. Wave five is a big money wave. So I, I just want to point this out just in case we're getting a little too bullish, just a tiny bit too bullish. Just bring it back in. Pump the brakes just slightly, okay? Really, there's nothing about this market that suggests the bulls have the big ball. Bulls have the little ball right now. Yes, they do. But they do not have the big ball. Um, Rickster, Rick, for the first... Um, for, for the sake of the recording, Risk, Risker saying, Risk, Rickster, Rickster is saying, I thought wave one and five were equal in distance. Well, that's the problem with Elliott Wave. It's it's a load of junk is what it is. Sorry about any Elliott Wave followers. Uh, you can't begin to tell me that wave one or wave three and five um are going to be the same distance. That that's that's impossible. Uh, it's just impossible. So there's there's too many traders out there. There's too many um, too many things going on the market. So anyway, now you know how I feel about Elliott Wave. Okay. So let's let's be done with that. <laughs> I got nothing good to say about it. Nothing. Other than you put ten Elliott Wave people in a room and only one will survive because the nine of them will kill. You know everybody will kill each other. Because they can't agree on anything. Anyway, uh, let's move on. So, uh, all I'm trying to point out here is is be doggone careful. Okay, uh, T2122, we're in the overbought area. Which, truth be told, I kind of like it up here. I I actually make more money when we're up here when the market is trending. Um, when the market is trending. So for me, it's, it's, I want to see a trend. And if I see that trend continuing to work, this doesn't bother me up here. The problem is I'm not sure we have a trend yet. In fact, no, I am sure that we don't have a trend yet. So this T2122 in this overbought area definitely concerns me. Definitely. Um, because we don't have that trend. So uh, we want to watch that. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to come crashing down here. That's not what that means. Uh, the only way we're going to come down here is if there's a load of sellers come into the market, which means here we are back at price and the chart, right? Everything boils down to the chart. Everything boils down to what price is doing. Everything. Okay. So any questions about that? Anything at all? And if not, we're going to look at some charts. And 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 please, uh, tonight, um, if you have some charts you want to take a look at, uh, please throw them out there. So, Okay, so let's get started here. Um, one of the things that, uh, one of the things in a chart that I absolutely love, and actually come to find out a whole lot of people like this, and, and that's when a chart does this right here. I mean, that's the sign of a trend, right? And I'll just keep it going here. Uh, that's the sign of a trend. All bullish trends will do this. All bullish trends will have a high, a higher low, higher high, higher low. I probably should do this. And most trends will fall down a little bit, and it will pick itself up, and it will get back in the game if it's a bullish trend, right? So this kind of chart right here, um, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm showing a chart pattern here. So whether we're right here at the 50 period moving average or whether we're right at resistance doesn't matter for this conversation right now, okay? Uh, I'm just looking at the chart. 
And um, so this is the chart we're looking for, I think, anyway. Uh, I think this is the type of chart that a lot of people look for. Now, you may be one of those those people that uh, you see this low, you see this high, you see this higher low, you might be one of these traders that you want to see a breakout. I get that. Makes perfectly good sense. Absolutely good sense. You may be one of these people that sees a, uh, a higher low, a doji, a long wick in here, and you're buying like a madman in here, which, okay, that makes perfectly good sense to me too. Uh, at the end of the day, once again, this is what we're looking for. Low, high, whoops, higher low. That catches our attention right there. When you can do something like add a double bottom in there, uh, that sort of thing, that's just an added benefit. So it's this right here. It looks like a thunderbolt, okay? It's also a one, two, three pattern, an ABC pattern. Um, it's a J hook uh, type pattern. Let's see here. There's your there's your rally up, here's your pullback, and there's your J as we as we break out right there. And there 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 really are a lot of ways to skin this cat. There really are a lot of ways. Um, here the other day I was kind of playing around and I found another way to skin this cat. And I'm really liking what some of the chart patterns are looking like. Look at look at Wells Fargo here. Um, and what, what this skin does is it looks um, not for double bottoms. This is just if it happens, it happens. But what it does look for is the lowest low, and I've got mine set at the past 14 days, um, the lowest low at the past 14 days uh, above that and below the highest high in the past five days. So... Um, what it does is it creates that low, that high, the high uh, above the lowest low in the past 14 days, which is going to count this one and this one. And here we rally up, and here we are below the highest uh, high in the past five days. So, um, so right here, low, high, higher low. Um, anyway, I. If somebody does not like that chart pattern, please shout out, um, share why, um, you know, this, this type of setup, um, we could, we could certainly, uh, maybe agree or disagree, um, on entry points that, that is very possible entry points, uh, but, it, but to get those entry points, you have to have that that rally up, that rest, and then that run right in here. So uh, Mike likes it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, let's see. Rick, sir, are you showing one here? Massey. Yeah, look at that. You're, you're exactly right. Uh, see how we go from a low to this high to a higher low, uh, and then we just kind of jump up to this higher high. Here it all, it, it just keeps on going, doesn't it? Now, this, we all love price action, I think, and we, we certainly talk about it an awful lot, and we certainly do think the world of it, uh, without, without a doubt. But we have to be careful that we don't start just, just, you know, we don't want to get entangled into price to where, um, you know, one, one day, we're looking at this whole picture and then if the market is not working out so well and you're kind of losing money here's what I've discovered happens to traders is you're looking at this picture and as things get worse in trading for you what you do is you start moving your sight line up as things get worse again you move your sight line up like this and as things get worse again for you you move your sight line up and as things get again worse for you you move your sight line up what you don't realize is you are making things worse for yourself um, as you do that uh, because we start focusing too much on just
price alone. Um, please don't get me wrong. I have not lost my love for price, but price is not the only thing in a chart. And we've got to look at other things as well. Um, like, like, like this chart. Let me get rid of all this now. Take this chart right here. Um, look, I get it if you didn't make any money here, but if, if you, for whatever reason, bought this chart in this area here, and you did not make any money here, then you need to research, figure out why you didn't, because the chart pattern is there. Chart pattern is there. Um, and if you find that you're getting stopped out of a lot of these, it could be where you're, you're, you're buying them. It could be where you're placing your stop. And here's a news flash for you. It could be that the market is junk. Okay. It could be that. Uh, it could be that the market is junk. Uh, and we have to know uh, what, where we're going to trade. Um, I wrote a note on my, uh, my daily, weekly um, um, bucket list. I have a, a bucket sheet called a bucket sheet. And uh, I wrote a note on there for tomorrow. Sit on my hands most of the day. Um, don't trade. Uh, and it's 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 because I want to stay in my lane. I can only afford a rowboat with a couple paddles, and I can't go buy a yacht. Can't afford a yacht, so I don't want to go out there and get above my uh, means. I don't want to get up, you know water over my head. So uh, I'm not going to go and hawk for a yacht. Um, I hope everyone catches that meaning right there. Stay in your lane, and uh, I wrote this on you know at the close today. Sort of making notes to myself for tomorrow. Uh, sit tight, uh, sit on your hands for the majority of the day. We'll see what the end of the day looks like, but uh, sit on my hands. So anyway, um, <laughs> Rickster, you just have a paddleboard. Let's see. BG is asking about. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mai is asking about BG. See, this is one of those charts right here. Um, here, here we have that double bottom, which that's just a, a benefit, a benefit of the chart. But here's this low, here's this high, here's this higher low. Look at that. So assuming, assuming that this chart continues to rise, which we all know it's probably not going to do that, right? You should know that, okay? I'm just trying to point out, assuming it continues to rise, it certainly may have uh, a black candle in there somewhere, something like that. But assuming it continues to rise, let, maybe we should do it this way. Assuming over the next, uh, say, 10 days, it gets to 126.50. If you don't make money on that, if you're in that, then this is where taking a step back and instead of Instead of losing money on this and running out and throwing another trade on so you can make up for this one, I think your money would be better spent don't buying a new trade and figure out why you couldn't trade this. That's a nice chart. I, I, that is a beautiful chart, if you ask me. So, um, it, and here, let's look at this. Look at that dark chart. Look at that. Look at that. And you can see here, without, without candlesticks, without price action, you can see the low, you can see the high, you can see the higher low, and you can see the higher high right there, just using that moving average. That, that's the three that I was following. So when you see a chart like that and you attempt to trade it, whether whether which I wouldn't, you know, right here, this is not what I'm going to chase. Uh, I'm going to watch this pullback, and this is what I would I like, what I'm going to look for. And there, I mean, if you look at price, there may be little little spots in there. Remember, we're just looking at the moving average. There, there might be other entries in there based on price. Um, but if you attempt to trade this and you don't make money on it, like, like I said, rather than go out there and buy another stock. How many people do that, by the way? Now, come on, reach reach deep, reach deep. You lose a trade 
and you actually start feeling like, well, I need to go get another trade to make money on to make up for the trade that I lost. Now, I, for one, am holding my hand up. So come on, let's be honest. Uh, I think I think we're all like that. Um, when we're finished tonight, hey, Julie, how are you, Fred? Thanks, Graham. You know, soul search a little bit. and But, but doing those little things like that um, can help you realize where maybe some of those mistakes are made. So anyway, let me get back here. Thanks, everybody. Everybody who's putting out yes. <laughs> yeah, two hands up. All right, so I've got a couple of charts here. Let's see. Look at Wells Fargo. I don't did we already look at this one? See how we've got this low, high, higher low. Wouldn't this be a sweet area to be buying Wells Fargo? But but I know what happens. I know what happens. Um, we start predicting the market. You know, the market's garbage. Um, the world's coming to an end kind of thing. And that that will that will get you. That will get you. Uh, because let's just follow the chart. Let's don't predict what the market's doing out there. While I personally think we go lower, yes, I personally think that. But I want to trade the market that's in front of me. If you feel like you don't want to hold overnight, the simple answer is don't hold overnight. Piece of cake. Uh, yes, that's a Fig Newton chart pattern right there. Uh, Fig Newton, yeah. Yes, it is. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, let's look at SO. Look at SO. Look how we have the low, we have the high. And I'm getting these all from a scan. I'm not going to cover the scan tonight. Um, there's too much in it. And um, it, Wednesday, tomorrow, uh, if Ed wants to, he can cover it. If Ed would like me to come in, and talk about it a few minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern, I would be happy to do that. And I'll go over this day again in detail because there's more time. We just don't have time tonight. So, um, but anyway, what, what it does, and again, just kind of in a nutshell, uh, it look, you know, the, the idea, the idea is I want charts that do this. I, I want, I want charts that do this. And I don't, I'm not interested in buying this move right here. Uh, I am interested in maybe buying this move. See, we're still there. Uh, I'm definitely interested in buying this move. And I'm definitely interested in buying this move or maybe right in here. Something like that. Okay. So the whole idea of this, um, by the way, it was Disney. <laughs> it was Disney that actually did it for me. Uh, uh, I was looking at Disney last week and I saw that and I was working with uh, some scans and it dawned on me because one of my favorite scans is everybody knows is a 3H trap. Uh, another one of my favorite scans and honestly this might even be my more favorite than the 3H trap is um, let me draw it for you. So you, you have a trend, uh, and then we have a pullback, and then we have buyers, right? So maybe this is a 3H trap, maybe it's not. But what it is, is it's below the highest high in the past five days, right? Below the highest high in the past five days. So what I, I looked at Disney last week, and I, I do not know why it, it kind of jumped out at me. Um, there is a, a way to set this up to buy um, or to be above the lowest low. Um, you can set that up and you can time it. So um, you, you, can, you can find that lowest low right there. Um, or actually would come over here probably something like that so what it does is it makes that chart pattern just like this it makes that chart pattern and uh, that's what I'm finding very very nice very nice here um, let's go back to so there so I'm not sure we finish that uh, so that chart right in there this could be a buy and then of course the breakout 
Um, I had several people today ask about so. I'm, I had uh, two different things to say about it. Um, one of them is, do you really want to buy it right here, right up against this resistance, or would you rather buy it on the breakout? Okay. So this is something every trader has to decide. And um, I think if I, I think if you were looking for a uh, I don't want to say better way, but if you want to eliminate risk, that maybe that's the way to say it. If you want to eliminate some risks, the better trade is actually up here, not down here. Um, and you know what? You're going to give away a whopping less than two percent. Um, if if that is if your aspirations are all about two percent, you're probably in the wrong business. Probably. So. Um, if you give that up, you eliminate some risk by buying up here because now you've broken out of that resistance up there. So, so, so there we go. Um, but if somebody said, look, hey, I'm buying it here and you had your stop relatively tight, that would make perfectly good sense. But that's up to Frank or Rickster or my or Gavin or Slim Calvin. Um, it's up to each trader. How do you perceive this as a trade? So, um, but anyway, I hope that makes sense. If we're if we're close to resistance, then it might be a better trade up here. It, it what makes it better is you 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 take away some risk. That's what makes it better. Um, I know that I'm. I always say things like you know. So you give up. Which you would end up giving club closer to two percent. Um, you know, big deal if you gave up two percent. Well, for some people that would mean a lot, and that's okay. That's okay if you're into that sort of thing. You're into that sort of thing. Um, you know, if 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 it moves up here, then this person uh, that buys it in here will make this much money. Um, this person that buys it here will make that much money. So you're definitely going to make more if it works out. You just have to decide how much risk you're going to put in there. Um, take, take a look at UPS. Look how UPS is working. Look at that. Low, high. And, and it's all coming up on, on these. I've got two different scans here that I'm working from. Um, and uh, one is the trap and one's below the highest high. Uh, that's what I'm working with here. So we've got this low, this high. See, we pulled back for a higher low, and here we've broken out. All bullish trends, by the way, uh, all bullish trends do that right there. So why not let's look for those? Why not let's put those in our plate, uh, put them in our bowl? Um, let's make a meal out of that. If, if, if that's what all bullish trends look like and and it is it truly truly is I I, I really hope um, not right now uh, but maybe later this evening uh, tomorrow on your own time maybe um, go find a chart that doesn't do that that has gone uh, a bullish trend that you wish man I wish I would have bought this down here well if you go look at it um, I, I, I guarantee what's going to happen is you're going to see that low to a high to a higher low uh, and then you're going to see that we jump up to that high to a higher low high higher low high you know you're, you're going to see that in every single chart there are zero exceptions to this rule zero so why not look for that if that is such a um, such a staple of a trend why not look for it right here so uh, here's UPS now some traders are saying you know hey UPS is still in a downtrend I totally agree with you others traders are gonna say hey we've broken out of that downtrend I would agree with that too so I guess it's up to each individual trader I personally think UPS is still in a downtrend um, mainly well not mainly the reason I think that is because until it gets over the 50 period moving average the bears still own this uh, the bears 
have the ball on this chart overall. The bulls are picking the ball up a little bit, but let's just see what happens up here. And if we do break out, all that's going to do is prove our point to let that trend work. And then you can get in at the best time uh, that suits you as a trader. This might not suit you. You know, you may you may look at this. In fact, I know I know of one person, uh, and I'm sure there's others, but I know for, for fact one person closed positions out today because this T2122 is way up here. And if that is if that is if that is what you do, there's nothing wrong with that, not at all. I, all I'm trying to say is do what you do best in, in, in reading the charts. Uh, read the whole picture, not just that hard right edge. And uh, I think we have found hands down that a chart in a trend will stay a trend till it's no longer a trend. So here comes another problem. Here comes another problem is... Uh, we look at this chart and we start we start worrying that we're going to miss out because the market is still bearish overall the bigger picture and somewhere along the lines uh, in your gut uh, you think the market is still going to go lower so what happens is we start pushing the envelope because we have to trade well you don't have to trade. Uh, what you do have to do is protect your capital. Protect your capital. One of the reasons why I wrote notes today on my uh, bucket sheet um, was because overall I took a small loss today in, in the account all because of VLO. Um, I'm still holding a Del Delta, uh, yeah, Delta and AT and T, uh, but I ended up closing uh, VLO with a loss. So uh, if I if I look at my and those members, you've got you should have a copy of this. If not, tomorrow uh, in the trading room, I can I can certainly get you a copy of it. You know, you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and. Um, I talked about this last week. If we, if red, red, come on, it's not working. Let's try this again. Try that again. We'll do this. Red, there we go. So uh, this is Monday, so we won't count that. Here's Tuesday. Um, so Tuesday, I had, uh, uh, well, Friday, uh, I, I, how come this is not, oh, there it is. So Friday, I had a green number. My account was up. So I plugged in a green number here. Uh, today, I had to plug in a little bit less. Well, that means I'm going to carry this down here tomorrow. Uh, so one day might not be a big deal. Uh, but what happens if you, uh, you, know, you plug this in right here, and then you do this again? And you, then you move this down to this price uh, and then um, so that's red so what if it happens again so my question now becomes what is it going to take to stop trading until you figure things out what is it is it is it three days is it four days you know is it five days is it a whole week of losing money every single day before oh man I better stop this before I go broke, right? So how many days? Well, it took me one day. How many, how many, how many licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Well, it took me one today. So what I'm trying to point out is, is manage your trades. Uh, well, this part of it anyway, I guess manage your trades. And you have to make this decision of of when enough is enough. When is enough enough? Sorry, I did get off a little sidetracked here. I do apologize. Uh, Misha, does anyone know the equivalent of a T2122 on TradeStation? Um, maybe somebody does, but I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, I do not. Uh, no. Let's see here. L let's look at, uh, take MS. Look at MS here. Now, 
Okay, so we're looking right here, but remember, we're looking right here because this is what's giving to us right now. Uh, a week ago, it might have been giving this to us right here. So, uh, see how we have this, uh, let's see, there we go. We have this low, this high, this higher low right here, and then see how we pop up. Well, see where we are right there? There it is. There is the 3 8 trap or below the highest high, the highest high within the past five days. So th this, is, this is setting up now what we want. This is now. And there's, it, it's n probably not a 3 8 trap. No, it's not a 3 8 trap. But it is below the highest high in the past five days. So you can see how it's setting up, and you can see how it's set up right here. So it could have been bought right in here. Okay. Phil uh, Saber. Let's look at Saber. Uh, look at Saber there. Um, okay. Look at that. Look at that low. And by the way, I'm looking back 14 days. Let's see if this works. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It does work. Now, I don't see Saber on my list, but I we, we may have different watch lists, okay? Um, I've not seen it come up, honestly. Uh, but like I said, it, it could be the difference of watch lists. Uh, but here it is, perfect. Uh, absolutely perfect. Low to a high to a higher low, and um, here we start to break out. So boom, here we break out. And here we are now uh, in a 3 8 trap or below the highest high in the past five days. So um, anyway, that 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 whole stair step, that that whole stair step um, it is just it, it, it's just fantastic. It, it's just fantastic. Scotty. Thank you, Scotty. That was extremely, extremely uh, kind of you um, to share that. I appreciate it. So Scotty there has written a code for T2122 uh, on Thinkorswim. Okay, I, I think he asked TradeStation. Thank you very much for sharing that. Very kind of you. Appreciate it. Um, Goldman Sachs. Look at Goldman Sachs. Let's get rid of all this. So let's back things up a little bit because we don't always have to be looking at the hard right edge. We, we don't learn by looking at the hard right edge. We learn by backing it up and, and learning how the chart operates. That's how we learn. And um, here we go. So let's, we're going to put this um, low in there. And then now we're going to start going. Here's well, there we here we are here low to a higher low. And I'm not going to change colors. Um, then a low to a higher low. It did it again. Uh, we did go a little bit lower on that, didn't we? But let's not shoot it. Look how that's working. It, it's not uniform. Not that my art is uniform. It's not uniform. Welcome to trading. But it's doing exactly what we want it to do. There's your trend. If you draw hard trend lines, uh, you can do that. Put hard trend lines on there. Uh, you can see how that works. You can see how it pulls back. So if you draw a hard trend line on here and you say to yourself, okay, I need this to move closer to that trend line, that's simple. That's where you just you put it on that watch list and you patiently wait. And then, of course, there's always the question is, what if it doesn't go all the way down there? And what if it does this? Well, you have two choices. One, you can have it on your watch list, in which case you would be alerted that it starts breaking out. So you have a choice to trade it, or you have a choice to move on to the next trade if this did not meet your criteria. Because if your criteria is... Um, to wait till it pulls closer to trend, then I think you should stick with your criteria. Okay. Um, 
Take GE. Look at GE. Look at that low. Look at that high. Look at us pulling back here. Perfect. Absolutely perfect uh, setting up. So GE right now to me has uh, a possible 7%, 7 7.25% to the 50 period moving average up here. Maybe a little more uh, depending on where it maybe has entered, you know, if you can get a, a better entry on that. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? Um, is it just, and one of the best things I, I think you could do is pull away from price just for a moment, just for a moment, and look at a chart without price on it so you can see what the chart is doing. And then you can attack it with price. Price is a, entry and price. That's that's what you're going to work with. Um, the chart pattern is about that. That in, in in GE's case is a reversal up with a rest. Okay. Hope that makes sense. And also, if anyone has any charts you want to take a look at, please please share them, and we'll take a look at them tonight. So I bought um, Delta Airlines today because of what it's doing and here we have the low the high the higher low and here we we actually made a higher high and we followed through <coughs> excuse me we made a higher high on Friday and then we continue I'm sorry Thursday and then we continued up Friday and now we pulled back and I, I bought uh, uh, Delta here um, AT&T is one. I bought this today. And look how that is just um, giving us that chart pattern. Um, low, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. And uh, so anyway, I, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. A little bit of sense. All right. Any questions? Any, any questions, anything at all, you name it. I'm going to grab a drink of water. Ooh, okay. Um, I had a PM here from somebody, and I'm going to go over that again. So uh, they were asking me in the very beginning here, they, they asked what lines I drew. Um, because right here confused them. I say a little PM here. Right here confused them. Um, uh, let's see if it makes more sense with this dark chart. Um, you know, it kind of does. It kind of does. Yeah. So if you, if you, uh, let's do this. Let's eliminate the T line and let's eliminate the three EMA. So really what we did is we took price out of the picture right there. We took the speed of price out of the picture. Now, if you look at this chart, you can, um, you can see how it's working. Right there. That's how it's working. So a little bitty, little bitty guy down here, all right? Uh, I'm going to smooth this out just a little bit for you. And... Um, Let's see, I have to do it this way. Whoops. Uh, what am I doing, Rick? Oh, here it is right here. So we're on the 17. I'm going to change this to the 20 simple. There we go. And what that, what that did is it smoothed it out a little bit over here. Didn't do a great deal for it up here. Uh, not a great deal. Uh, but anyway, you can see that that move up and yes I'm even counting this as part of it I'm just trying to smooth things out a little bit to get a picture without price okay um, and that's what I see now we know there's a little 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 bullish little blip going on right now which that's all this is until it turned bearish and you know how do we know this could go up further before it turns bearish to the downside. And by the way, 
I, you know, I, I'm just, just because, just because that's what I'm seeing. That's only because we're underneath the 50 period moving average and the 200 period moving average. If in fact we manage to, you know, get through them, then be completely different story, completely different story. Uh, but right now, um, right now, as long as we're underneath them, I see this chart pattern setting up, which, by the way, this is just the opposite of what we've been looking at um, uh, once we broke down. Here we have this low to high, and then we broke down. Uh, let's see here. I don't have the wrong colors on here, so I'm just going to use green. Uh, so now we go from a high to a low to a failed high to a lower low. And really what I'm concerned with is we're going to rally, make another failed high, and then to the downside. That's my concern until we take out that 50-period moving average right here and 200-period moving average, which doesn't guarantee, you know, the bulls are going to take off. But that is, that, that is what I would be looking for myself, okay? All righty. Okay, let's see. Misha, I have CVS. Let's take a look at that. Uh, CVS. Um, let's get rid of all that right there. I have CVS. Uh, uh, let's do this one first. As short, I'd love to know what I see. I agree with you. Um, I think that's a nice looking short. Uh, very nice. In fact, I'm going to write that down. Thank you. So let, let's let's take this apart. Uh, well, here, let, and let's go over here to this chart. Let's take this apart. So, um, and this is the 20 here. So we'll just leave that up for now. Um, let's get red. So here we are red. And let's get green. And here we are red. You see how that's working? Now, I know this has a little tail moving up. That's because the 20 simple moving average is um, uh, lagging, lagging price. But you see how that's down? So wave one, two, three, we had that little little tiny move to the upside. We'll go back to the chart. So now what you're doing is you're looking for that uh, second um, money wave to the downside right there. So yeah, nice, very nice chart set up here. Uh, we also have uh, the 50s turned over. We're testing the 200 period right now. Uh, we've rallied up uh, when you look at this really you know we're still in that downtrend so I mean if it was to turn around th that would be a different game of course uh, but right now it just looks uh, nothing but to the downside uh, to me so nice nice job thank you for very much what was the other one here MDLZ uh, MDLZ um, yeah that's not looking too good e either um, I'm not sure this is the place to short it. I would need to see uh, price on that, you know, for the entry. Uh, I just don't blindly, oh, hey, it's a short because it's against resi resistance. That doesn't really crank me up. Um, I want to see that that candle in there. But, man, you look at this chart, and that is, that is that's just an ugly chart. Uh, so I absolutely have to agree with you. Um, could be a nice-looking chart. Over the 50 period moving average, it would give me concern, probably. Uh, but nevertheless, that, that is an ugly chart. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, raw stores as a short. Yes, for now. So, so here, here's the $64,000 question with any chart that we're, that we're buying. Here we rally up. So, the... It, at first glance, it looks like a short, and I, I totally agree with you, okay? Here's just the part that I want to just throw a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of caution out there. And uh, pretty nice comeback. I mean, you got to hand it to it. Wow. So while we are in this downtrend, totally agree, short setup. Be careful. I mean, what in the world brought all this on? Maybe something, maybe nothing. But what happens is if we start picking up buyers and then start moving up and we break out of this high. That, that's the only thing I want to caution on. Low, high, higher, low, and then we get to that higher high. 
Um, I, I, this is where we want to be a trader. Okay, so put your rules in place. I don't know, maybe that's your stop, uh, that high right in there, which 6%, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Um, and as long as price continues to fall, then I, I think it's a nice short. Just, you know, I just look at this and I have to wonder, where is, it, where is that coming from? That's all. That is all. Um, <laughs> thanks, Mission. Thank you very much. Um, Google held from last week. Yes. Yeah, you know what? We better talk about that. Uh, we better talk about this. Uh, Google is holding. Holding. Um, for Google to be any good long, um, look, chart, charts can do this, okay? They, they can do all this, and they can keep going. Every time we move a little higher, this chart becomes more riskier, all right? It, it, I, I, a lot of rookie traders do this. You know, they see something like this. They see a green candle. They start piling in. And, you know, it moves up again. They think they're the smartest cat in the world when they wake up the next morning and it does this. So um, mind your rules. You know, mind your rules. The chart's been up one, two, three, four days. How many days is it going to go up before it pulls back? So, um I think personally, all charts, every chart, no exceptions to this rule, this is not the buy. Wait for the pullback, wait for the test, and if this is to the true high where it pulls back from, this becomes the tradable bottom. I'm glad it's working for you, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not here to say it's going to fail, I'm just here to point out what you might look for in a chart. With that said, let's go look at FNGU, which I think is doing a really good job. Um, nice double bottom here. Uh, I think we really don't know why I have that line in there. Oh, I do know why we had that line in there. Let's pull this down. There we go. Maybe I didn't have it in the right place. Uh, we have a bullish double W pattern. We're over the trend indicator. We're over the bullish W pattern. While the chart can absolutely do this, it can. I just don't need an answer. What do you think the probabilities are? We'll just leave that at that. So, what do we need to see? We need to see that low to a high to a some sort of a rest, a pullback, something, and then wherever that is. And once we move over it, that becomes the tradable bottom right in there. Like Mike says, we need a pullback to test. Pullback to test. So the reason you, you put Google out there reminded me to go look at FNGU. Um, I do not believe this market can go up very high without the FANG stocks, the FANG group. And um, if you use FNGU as your... Um, ticker symbol, it gets you that fang group right there. So, thanks, James. Thank you. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, okay, uh, let's see. Phil, Phil, you got some PayPal here? PayPal, there we go. PayPal, nice. I love that chart. Here's the first thing that, that jumped out at me. Absolute first thing. Boom, 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 boom. I love that chart. Nice. We're going to stop that. We're going to put this line up here right there. We break out of this high. That is, I'm flagging that. I'm writing that down. Thank you very much. Hey, pal. Appreciate it. Uh, nice. Beautiful chart. Does everybody see that? Does everybody see that? Um, somebody might be saying, well, we're running into resistance. Yeah, we could be. We absolutely could be. We could. All that could be resistance in there, those highs. Um, 50 could be that resistance. Um, let's look at um, price. That's what I'm going to look at. 
And then as we approach these areas, well, that just might be where you need to take profits from. Uh, so let's just split the middle. So that could be 11.5% trade. I'll give a tiny bit. So tiny bit. Carol, hi. Uh, and if you wait for a pullback, your entry may be the same place as your original chasing of the stock. You are very, very right. Yes. 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 Yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, F and GU is up four days, so we need a, a pullback, I think. Um, it doesn't mean it's going to come tomorrow. It uh, doesn't gonna be, mean it's going to come in the next five days. doesn't mean that. Um, I, it just what, what I do think is the higher it goes without a pullback test, I think the riskier it is. The riskier it is. So, so as, it, as it moves up, it becomes more risky. As it moves up again, it becomes more risky. And that's because it's getting further and further away from any support. And we don't want you to do that. Hi, right, Janine. Uh, Rick, if you buy options on these trades, how far out uh, do you go out of expiration? Here, let me show you. Pick one. Pick any one you'd like. You name it. You name it. Any one you like. And I'm going to grab a drink of water while you're doing that. <clears throat> Apple. All right. Here, I'm going to bring up Apple here first. There we go. And by the way, I, that's a nice chart, I think. So let's come over here. Uh, I'm going to go Apple. So um, well, here's, here's what I'm looking at. That's, I mean, I can make this. You know, we can go out more, but I'll just keep it where it was, something something like that. Uh, so I, I'm not going to go 17 days because I really want it to go further out uh, in, in case, in case I keep it longer, which is slim to none. But more than anything, uh, the decay on it is less when you go out further. So um, these right here are weeklies, and I don't trade weekly, so... The July 45 would be as soon as I could buy this. And honestly, I think the July 45s are just fine. And anything out further would be just fine as well. So here's what I would do. Let's take the July. And then I'm going to look for open interest. Wow, there's a ton of it right here, right? And around 70, 71 is around 70. So I would be looking at the uh, July 140 strike. If you went to August, which there would be, <coughs> excuse me, there'd be nothing wrong with going out to August. Um, the open interest is not quite as much, but hey, that's what we've got here, 56, 2000, 57, 53. There's nothing to sneeze at about that. That is perfectly fine. Um, around 70, 68 is around 70, 74 is around 70. So the 135s or the 140s is what I would look at. Um, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Okay, if you have another question on that, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that I got it. But if, like I say, if you need something there, just shout out. All right. Now we're going to put that back now. Let's see. Uh, Rick with PayPal. PayPal. Let's get rid of all that. There we go. Uh, with PayPal, wouldn't it be better to wait for uh, it to come back to test support? Well, where's support? Um, you know, I, I guess that's what we have to ask ourselves. Where is support? Uh, would you think that is support? In which case, exactly how close do you want it to, to test? <laughs> um, you could be looking at this right here, maybe. I guess you could be. I guess you could be looking like that. And... I don't buy into that personally. Um, you know, I, there's nothing wrong. Look, if you wanted to come back and test support, there, there's nothing wrong. I'm certainly not going to say that's the wrong thing to do. It's not. It's not. Um, I look at this chart and I'm looking at the price pattern here. Um, I see a low, high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. What more do you want out of a trend? 
You know, what more do you want out of a trend? And uh, I think that's a perfect trend setting up. So um, rather than me wait for that pullback to trend, I'm looking at price action here. And I'm seeing where we go from a little bullish engulf to a doji to a pretty good move here that closed over this very important candle. And now we have an inside day. So I'm all about that right there. Uh, stop wise, if we got below the T line, I would be unhappy. If that trend indicator turned red, I would be unhappy. Uh, which case, that's what if if we bought it at the very uh, close today, then that would put us down 3.65 percent, which I think is affordable. Okay, so uh, you know. The, the more we get to the hard right edge, this is where more and more everybody asks questions. And really, it's, it's a developed skill, I guess, uh, is what you would have to do. And it's trial and error is what it is. Because, because I, can't, I, I can't argue with coming back to support. I, I, I can't argue with that. I, I think that's absolutely correct. At the same time, I'm looking at this chart pattern and I see this as an absolute buy. Um, buy on this day, it, it's a buy today, it was a buy. And if we start seeing some, well, anything to the right, well, I, I think I would like to see it go up, I guess. If we start to break out, this would be an absolute buy. So, you know, as as we 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 can we, we can here we we can look for these trades, these set. Whoops, wrong one, wrong one. There we go. We we can we can we can spot these, and the closer we get to the hard red hard right edge, it becomes more about what I do for me, what Misha does for Misha, what John does for John. Uh, what L does for L, what Jean, you know, does for Dean. So it, it's it's kind of a. There's nothing wrong with waiting for that, and there's nothing wrong with buying on this breakout here. So it it just becomes a. What kind of trader are you? That there there's no absolute perfect right answer. Right answer. The closer we get to the hard right edge. Um, there, there's going to be uh, there's going to be traders that wait for it to come here, and you just might miss this trade. Fact of life. There are going to be traders that buy into this, and it's going to slam hard, and you're going to wish you never took this trade. And for for I I, I would say it's it's it, it's a fifty fifty deal here. It's it's a it's a it's a learned art when you come into here, and what you learn is you learn how to recognize what the market is doing. You learn to recognize. For me, um, I use UVXY now. I I I have learned to learn to to watch what the VIX is doing. So, for instance. If, if the VIX, UVXY is what I'm using, if UVXY is moving up here and I buy PYPL, and if PYPL slams back, well, I deserve every damn bit of pain that I get because that is right here is a reason not to buy something unless you have some absolutely a clear reason. And maybe that support line is a clear reason. On the other hand, if if UVXY continues to take a nosedive, then I'm thinking PYPL is on my plate tomorrow. So it, 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 it's about looking at all this stuff. Here's another chart that I look at an awful lot. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's right here. Uh, T2123. I follow this a lot, okay? Um, and I follow the hourly chart and I follow the 15 minute chart. So if you guys in the room, trading room, if you hear me say, um, 
Well, let's just start right here. Um, if you hear me say right here that the Bulls are losing the ball, this is exactly what I'm looking at right now. That that is exactly what I'm looking at. This right here, if if I start seeing this um, move, well, right here, I might say uh, the the sellers are picking the ball up. This is this is the exact chart I'm looking at, and. As we start moving up, then I might say the bulls have just picked the ball up right in here. And uh, go Google what T2123 is. It, it's the uh, cumulative four-week new high, new low. Uh, go Google it. Learn about it. Um, but I, I follow this. I follow that UVXY. And, and sometimes I'll look at the VIX. The only reason I follow UVXY is because I trade UVXY sometimes. So um, really, this uh, this trading the VIX, you know, uh, tomato tomato. At the end of the at the end of the at the end of the day, you get tomato sauce. Uh, so um, anyway, I follow those two charts closely. So as I do that, and along with the market, then I I can go in here and I can trade PayPal. And how I trade PayPal or any other chart is going to be is going to have the weight of those other charts in it as well. Okay, so so I, and and other people might use other indicators. I I, I hear a lot of people they use MACD, they use uh, RSI, they use different things to to uh, help determine how things are working. Um, and this is where every trader just has to decide what works for you. I mean, to give you an example, this T2123, heck, I had no idea what this, that's not it, T2123, I had, had no idea what this was, none. And I had one of the members uh, of Hit and Run Candlesticks show me this, and I watched it for about a year. I never even talked to him about it. He gave me a little brief what he does, you know, and uh, I watched it for about a year before I did anything with it. You know, I just had it there on, on my chart. I, and I mean, I gave him the courtesy of, of watching it. And now I got to tell you, it is it is a, a staple for me, an absolute staple. Um, and, and again, the only charts I watch is the 15, and I bounce, I don't have two charts of this, I have one. Uh, when the 15 minute chart, uh, say, does this right here, then I will take a look at that hourly chart, and is the hourly chart doing it? Um, if it is, then the bulls have the ball. If I start, and right here, I think the bulls have the ball. If on the 15 minute chart, we start doing this, the bulls are giving the ball up. Doesn't mean that they can't, you know, they're turning the ball over. Doesn't mean they can't get the ball back. But right now, heads up, the the bulls are giving the ball up a little bit. Okay. So anyway, back to PayPal. So, you know, is it better to wait for it to pull down here? It is if it pulls back and it gives you a buy signal. Is it better to buy here? It is if it gives you that alert to buy it. I, I look. Let's talk about the scanner, and then I, you know, so I'm gonna make this stay on top. Like I look, I, I, I mean, I do care if whether you use this scanner or somebody else's cancer. I think this is a better scanner. But look, if you if you use something else for whatever reason. That's fine. I think that's great. Okay. But I can put a chart on here and I can follow it now. And I don't have to. It, 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 it's like thumping me in the forehead. So um, if I put pay, <coughs> excuse me, if I put PayPal on here, which I am going to, um, then when I see PayPal popping up, giving me a green arrow tomorrow, then I can go look at it and I can decide if I want to buy it. And um, 
so it it so so number one we've got to find a chart that is doing what we want it to do and I do not think this is the buy down here I'm totally against buying picking the bottom I, I'm just insanely against that what I'm more after is a chart that proves to me it's working and so far it's proving that it's working I cannot tell you if it's going to go down here I can't tell you if it is I can't tell you if it's going to move up here I can tell you I love this chart that I can tell you I can tell you that from and I'm just going to take from the trend indicator I do that a lot up here I see 15 and a half percent so I can tell you that trade is in my wheelhouse I can tell you that I'm going to put it on this scanner and I can tell you that if it pops up tomorrow I can tell you I'm going to go look at it I cannot tell you that I'm going to buy it because I don't know but if it starts popping tomorrow you bet I'm going to buy it you bet that's a nice chart so first find the charts you like the, the you know setup wise second put them someplace so you have um, instant access instant access and and that's what this is and, and again I, I mean I would certainly like everybody to be using the live trading alerts but if you don't you don't if you use something else that's perfectly fine just just use it that's <laughs> just use it okay that's the important thing that's the important thing all right let's see what what do we what do we have going here um, Uh, let's see here. Uh, FGBI. FGBI. Do I like it? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, maybe I'm going to be straight up honest with you. Where, where did I? Uh, FGBI. No, I do not like it. Uh, to start with, it only traded 32,000 shares today. And that's a big negatory in my, in my world. Yeah, that's a great big no. I wouldn't even think about trading a chart that only has 32,000 uh, um, uh, tra trade 32,000 in volume. Um, with that said, then above $29 uh, might be a buy here, but I think you're asking for trouble. So, um, what else did I miss here? Let's see here. How you put a stop loss so you survive the trend without hitting a stop loss? How do you put a stop loss on uh, so that you survive the trend without a stop loss? Uh, kosh, is it Kosh, Kush, Kosh, something like that? Um, welcome to trading in 2022. I think if anybody can make it in 2022, um, I think you're a darn good trader, okay? So the key is to make it in 2022. In other words, survive. What I'm, what I'm getting at here is um, we only have control over certain things. Now, I'm going to use PayPal again. We only have control over certain things. We have control to go look for a chart we like. We have the control to put a stop in. We have that control. Simply ask yourself why you like this chart, um, and that should get you close to where your stop is. Um, so, and, and then we have control to sell whenever we want to. We have that control. Once we buy the chart, once we put the stop in, we lose control. We have no control whatsoever. We can't do anything after that. So we put the stop in to protect us. We put a target in or whatever you do for, for profit taking. So how do you put a stop in to survive this market? Welcome to 2022. It's, it's rough. Why did I write down today to sit on my hands tomorrow? Because 
today was too choppy. Today was too to go nowhere, but yet went up and down. Dangerous trading. Dangerous trading. Um, I, I have heard more people, swing traders, tell me that the past couple months that they've had to almost become uh, day traders. Almost. And that is because of this choppy market. That is because stops get run. So one thing I've done is I'm trading with little tiny bit of money compared to what I usually trade with. Not that I trade a lot of money. It's just I've really cut it back. Um, I trade much fewer positions um, to just basically maintain my sanity uh, because this market is so freaking crazy right now. All right. Um, if you find yourself getting stopped out too many times, then what I would do, and, and please feel free to share. For those of you, by the way, um, I don't recognize your name. Um, now, I don't recognize your name as far as a member goes, okay? Uh, I do recognize your name. Uh, for those that don't know, if you're a member of Hit and Run Candlesticks, please come to the Hit and Run Candlesticks trading room. If you're a member of Right Way Options, please come to the Right Way Options room. I'm about to tell you about a third room that no member has any business being in because it's not moderated. You won't get anything from it, okay? However, if you post in this room, if you, uh, uh, both Doug and I, from time to time, we do come in there and we, we say a thing or two. I do watch the room, and if I see something posted, I do try to uh, comment on that post more than anything. Just type in there something about that post. So, um, I th for those that are not a member you're more than welcome to go to that room and simply go to the uh, website and it's right there free trading room uh, please log in it, it's supported um, uh, it's you know paid for by hit run and, and right way options and it's for members that don't or for people that don't want to pay anything uh, but they want a community anyway my, my point here is that's a good place to share those kind of concerns and we can look at charts to maybe help figure out what's going on. All right. Again, it's not fully moderated, so don't you know? Don't think you're going to get any any wowzer on that. Um, but it, it's what I would do is I would go back and look at each individual trade, and I would consider what was the chart pattern, where was support, and what. And this is this to me it's got to be one of the most important things there is is what in the world was the market doing at that time okay so I'm gonna go look at FNGU because somebody mentioned it earlier that FNGU is up four days one two three four that is correct so if you were to buy something right now in the market does it seem smart answer should be no because the higher we go, while this is a rookie mistake, the higher we go, people start piling in. And then when, when this happens, they're singing the blues. Okay? They're singing the blues. And they can't figure out why. I'm not saying this is you, okay? But they can't figure out why. Well, if, if you're buying four, five, six, seven, eight days up, Say in the SPY, in the FNGU, in the Qs, the Diamonds, IWM, you're begging for trouble. You're daring trouble to come to you. So, and I'm, again, I'm not saying that's what you're doing. I'm not saying that's what's happening. But that free room is a good place to toss that stuff out and then maybe we can figure it out um, on those charts you're looking at. So, I hope that helped. But anyway, seriously, if you if if 2022 will make a trader out of you, it will make a trader out of you. Um, is the trend indicator 
Um, <laughs> Trindicator, no. The, the tr <laughs> no. The, the Trindicator is just the 17 exponential moving average. That's all it is, okay? That's all it is. We just figured out a clever way in TC2000 to uh, have it turn green when price is above it and turn red when price is below it. I believe there's a thinkorswim code out there. There may be other codes out there that you can do the same thing. But all it is, I mean, I'm serious. All it is is the 17 exponential moving average. That's what I use, okay? I know a lot of other people that use the 20. I know some, I know one person uses the 13, um, and they have it so it turns red and green. So I wish it was my own little thing, yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, okay, I see. Let's look at PayPal again. All right. So uh, you say, uh, I, try, I, tried not to, I tried not to go into a trade if the trend indicator is still red. It looks green to me. Um, uh, that's what you mean. Okay, that's what you mean. Well, it looks green to me. Uh, that's, you know, that's green. So um, to me, this is a buy. Now, with that said, uh, here, let's just put this back. It's a buy to the 50 period moving average, and that's it. So it's a buy, you know, it's not a buy right here. It's a buy in this area, and then make a little money going to the 50. I'm a moving average trader. I like moving averages. So I don't look at PayPal, oh, PayPal's going up here. No, I mean, it might, but it's got to cross this bridge before it can get to that bridge. So let's cross one bridge at a time. And when we get to this bridge, I'm going to protect my money. If it still looks good, I'll rebuy it. Because the reality is, how many times have you ever seen a chart move up and not negotiate its way across the 50 period moving average? Oh, it, oh, it, may, it may do this and then negotiate. It will give you another, another entry. That I know. If it's going to be bullish, it'll be bullish. So to me, it's a freight trade to the 50. And then from there, uh, we can uh, trade maybe up a little higher to the next. So. But anyway, Misha, I want to make sure that, that you're set up right here. Uh, and then we're going to call it a night pretty quick. But I do want to make sure that you're set up because you said... Um, you try not to trade a trade if we're below the trend indicator, which, or when it's red, and I see it as absolutely green, okay? Yeah, the trend indicator, it's just a name we made up. <laughs> Here's my favorite for anyone that, no, there's not too many people ask about it now, but most of the time I, I have something here. But see right here where it says the power line? And I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes I do this just to mess with everybody. The power line. Um, I've had people just... Uh, I, well, I remember when I first put it up there, there was... I bet you I got a hundred questions. What's the power line? Like it was something important. All it is is a linear... There it is right there. Uh, it's a linear regression line is all it is. Uh, there's nothing power about it. Uh, what it just is shows me... I like it better than a moving average for... Um, uh, I like it better than a moving average for a volume. So, <laughs> me too. Anyway. so uh, let's see. My sometimes a they turn into WWE. My my my! Look at that! Look at that go! Nice nice. Or EA. You know, I almost bought EA EA today. I almost bought that today. Almost, and I chose not to. Take quicker profits. Yeah, uh, 2022. Uh, okay, 2022, I think, is going to go down in history as... Um, um, it, it's going to go down in history as... Could be a good year for long-term traders. It could be. Um and it's, it should be a good year for faster traders. I'm not saying day traders or scalpers. 
but for traders that take profits into uh, quicker profits, yes, you're right, quicker profits into strength and traders that, that keep your stops tighter, uh, which a lot of times, if you're not careful, it will push you into some kind of day trading or scalping. Um, you have to be careful because I, I think that's a dangerous game to get into. Uh, but it will go down in history, I think, as um, quicker profits, tighter stops, or just flat long term. Uh, thanks, B2 One. Uh, let's see, you used uh, used to use the 34. I did, yeah, uh, right years ago. Absolutely. Um, the 17 is half that. That's not why I use a 17, but yeah, 17 and a half, uh, half that. Um, that's not why I use the 17. Uh, the reason I use the 17, it just seems to fit my trading better. Uh, I don't think there's anything magic about the 17. Um, I think it just it just works for me. Um, you could here. Let's do this. Uh, let's put this where back where it's supposed to go. There we go. Let's move this back down here. So, oh, that's not what I want. Uh, let's go to the dark chart. So, um, uh, let's do this. So I'm going to put this back to the 17 real quick. Um, I'm 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 a i am i am i am would say I'm a bit of a faster trader. I don't let I don't let profits go way high. You'll never see me. Uh, it, it'll be super super rare uh, if you ever see me say, "Hey, I'm taking 80 percent on this trade, or 70, or 50, or even 40." Um, in a good market. Uh, I'll get 30% sometimes, but uh, I'm not I'm not that kind of trader, and uh, so for the most part I'm kind of a faster swing trader, and uh, I'm taking profits into strength all the time, and, and this 17 just seems to work better for me, just like the T line seems to work better for me, which over the years I guess I've just the T line has grown on me and I've grown on it. Uh, we're sort of attached at the hip. Uh, so, um, and, and, and this is what every trader needs to do. It's not that the 17 or the T-line is magic. It's not that it works for everybody. Um, number one, stop trading for a while. I, this is my answer to a lot of things, by the way. Just stop trading. Uh, I don't know what it is about people. Uh, I was the same way. Uh, I've, I've learned to pump the brakes, though. I, I have done that. Uh, but I used to be the same way. Um, by God, I've got six monitors. You dang straight, I'm going to trade. You know, um, I have a trading account. You're not going to stop me from trading. I'm going to trade tomorrow no matter what, right? And, and this is kind of the attitude we have, where if we stopped trading for a little while and we actually studied charts, um, I think you would learn a lot about yourself, a lot. Um, the, the dotted deuce right here took me well over a year to figure out of studying. I, I would study during the day, and I would study at night, and I would study on the weekends. And what I mean by study is I would look at charts, and I would put different moving averages in there, and I just kept working, working, working until I... I decided this was the best one, uh, and now it's it's it, it's jo I'm joined at the hip with it. Uh, it's joined to my hip. Um, the T line, the T line, this black line here. This was this was uh, this came about um, after absolute account disaster, and I I do mean disaster of uh, sitting down one time and just like over several months of flipping charts with lots and lots and lots and lots of moving averages and then eliminating them because I only wanted moving averages that made sense to me and the T-line just stuck out and what happened what I found is charts in an uptrend um, tend to bounce off of it and continue to work and then when they go below it then the, the little the short-term downtrend or longer term um, the charts that bounce up 
uh, price it bounces up, it tends to hit it, like, like this right here, until something changes it. And it, it's, in, anyway, it, it took study is what it did. It, it, trading does not get you anywhere for education uh, other than losing your money. It's study that does it. So, anyway, sorry, I kind of went off left field over there. But yeah, you're right. I used to use the 34 a lot. I don't use it that much anymore. Um, where I do use it, it's built into some scans for a trend. That that I do have it in some scans. So, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, thank you, Misha. Appreciate it. What I mean is, after the trend indicator has turned green. Uh, and then I wait for that first pullback, uh, not straight after it has turned uh, green. I'm seeing a trend indicator as green as well. Okay, but but is it not pulling back? I mean, there's the pullback. Uh, one of our favorite favorite entries is is the uh, three eights trap, and are we not right there? I, I mean, we're a little bit over it, but you know, are we gonna you know are we gonna Take this chart to the train station because we're, you know, a nickel over it. Are we going to do that? I call that a pullback inside day. Now, that's what I call it, okay? You may say a different. I'm not trying to change you. I'm just trying to explain to you why I think this has got buy written all over it. And, and that's based on positive trading tomorrow or the next day or the next day. I mean, we could... We could do the same thing for a week as far as I know. So this is a trade. I love the chart pattern. This is a trade if we start to show that positive trading. Uh, another place it could be a trade too is, um, it, you know, if it slides back a little bit in here and then starts up. But we're right there right now. This is the pullback. Right here. Now, uh, I'm, and then uh, I'll get to everything here. But if somebody could draw a line, that would solve my problem here. Okay. Um, there's two entries that I love. One is a three H trap. The other is below the highest high in the past five days, which seven out of ten times it's going to be out. It's going to be a three H trap. The other three times, 3% of the time, um, it may be above the three, the trap, but here we are right there. We're below the highest high in the past five days or equal to it. Again, I'm not going to take this this chart out to the train station. And by the way, if you don't watch Yellowstone, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to take it to the train station because we're not one penny below well, we are actually, if I went to the high, there we go. We're below the highest high. To me, that's a pullback. That's consolidation. That's rest. Pullback, consolidation, rest. Same thing. They come in different shapes and sizes, but they're the same thing. I hope that helps. Okay. Uh, or you use them in special situations. Um, Uh, you created a movement. Um, <laughs> I think I did. Yes, L. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Hey, what Doug says there, profit traders rarely worry about home runs. Yeah, so true. So true. Um, yeah, so true. So true. Anyway, thanks for drawing the line down there. I appreciate it. I hope I answered everything. Uh, again, if you're not a if you're a member of Right Way Options and you want to and you're not a member of Hit and Run Candlesticks, if you want to be in the free room, you can also do that too. Just remember, it's not going to be moderated. You're not if you are a member, you are completely wasting your time being over there. If you're a member of both rooms, uh, you are completely wasting your time uh, over there. I'm not trying to take away from that room. It's just that it's not moderated during the day. Um, the membership right way options are hit and run. That's the place to be uh, if you're paying for it. I mean, that's where you're going to get uh, love, care, 
orneriness, um, things like that. So anyway, thank you so much for being here, everybody. I do appreciate it. I'm going to go have a cookie, and we'll see everybody tomorrow morning. You guys all take care. Again, thank you very much for being here, and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, good trading, good trading, and stay on your toes. Good night, everyone.